Hey you folks, Quillidine here, and welcome to Let's Try Planet Base. Planet Base is a game where you make a base on a planet. It is a sort of a survival strategy simulation kind of game. You, you build up your little base and try to survive there. It's very sort of uh, The Martian-esque in a sense. Uh, there's a pretty decent tutorial to get you started. I have gone and dabbled uh, in my own attempt to play the game. Things went horribly, many people died. So it should be fun. I've only dabbled a little bit. You can see here, um, I haven't unlocked any other planets because I haven't unlocked that many milestones because I just haven't survived long enough to be able to do that. So we're going to call this uh, base, um, let's call it base Q18. I like that one. So we're on a class D planet, medium sized desert planet with a thick CO2 atmosphere, which partially protects it from meteors and solar flares. I haven't encountered a solar flare yet. Meteors on the other hand, eesh. Um, characteristics, light them out. Very high light, solar panels will operate at full capacity. Atmosphere density, high, suitable for wind turbines, wonderful. Sandstorm risk, high, solar flare risk, low, meteor risk, low, you lie. Um, I mean, may maybe that is a low meteor risk, but oh my god, that you can take some serious beats from those bad boys. Sandstorms are definitely a, a significant problem. All right, it is a lovely looking game. It is made in Unity Engine, but uh, clearly the Unity 5 engine in terms of the graphics, it's clearly using physically based shaders and um, probably some of the uh, the real-time lighting model. I think it actually looks fantastic. There's a nice sort of subtle um, grittiness to some of the textures here that really make it look like they have, they're covered in a, a bit of a layer of dust and just lovely. So here we go. We've got our initial colonists unloading from the landing module. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, you cannot skip this little cutscene thing. Also, if you do get reach a milestone and you click on it to view the sort of little animation they've got, as far as I can tell, you can't skip that either. Game developers. What the hell? Okay, so here's the area we're gonna have to deal with. Um, I don't know if it's procedurally generated or they just have like a pretty um, big set of landscapes and it lands you in a semi-random spot because as far as I can tell, the landscape has never been the same twice. I'm not sure which way it goes. So we've got uh, we've got some people, some of these guys. We've got William Haynes over here as a worker. Timeo Gill and Gilberto Dudley, also workers. We've got uh, one engineer. We've got two biologists over here, and we've got one medic. We've also got two bot, uh, robots. We've got a CR1 carrier bot and a CNT2 constructor bot. So right away, we got to make sure that our people aren't going to die. Their spacesuits only have so much oxygen. So let's get us started. We're going to put an airlock down to enter the base, and we're going to get an O2 module. And we're going to put it down over there to connect. You click on one module, then the other, and you can tell your people that we're going to want a link between those two. Now, this is not going to work without power. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build, and these are going to be exterior buildings. We'll get uh, maybe just some solar panels down right away to start. Um, yeah, the spaceship's a little too close over here. I'm not really thinking about my layout too much, and I probably should. But uh, we'll f fix it relatively soon. So let's get that stuff queued up. If I click on my ship, you can see some of the stuff we've got. We've got a bunch of metal. We've got some bioplastic in here. Metal and bioplastic are your two primary construction materials. You can see them being carried over here and ready to be deployed. Uh, we've got some meals. Looks like we've brought a bunch of pasta with us. And we'll need the carbs to work hard here. We've got some spare parts and some medical supplies as well. Okay. We've got power, we've got an O2 generator, and we've got the airlock, and soon the connection there will be done. However, the O2 generator will not work without water. It needs to extract water from the ground, and then presumably it separates the oxygen from the hydrogen. Um, this is another external module. I'm just going to go ahead and put it sort of out of the way over here. I'm going to try to build my real base. Um, ooh, maybe, maybe I'm going to dead end a bit. Well, we can probably go through here. Some of this rubble will get cleared out, so it's going to be okay. So you can see here, the airlock has no oxygen and the oxygen generator has no water. So we're gonna have to wait for this water to get finished. We're gonna go ahead and connect those over there. So we'll extract water using power, and the power will also be used to run the oxygen generator. And there we have it. Right now, yeah, there's no oxygen in any of these places, but that should get built relatively quickly. Someone should be bringing things over there. I think the construction work robot is probably doing that. I'm gonna let that finish before I build anything else. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about how oxygen flow works, there we go. Anything else needed here? Nope, just the metal bits. And that'll be enough. And then the construction worker and maybe one of my actual worker units will go and get this done. Water generator. And as soon as this connection is done, I think, is this a worker? Engineer. <clears throat> That'll work. And there we go. We should, indeed, our oxygen levels are going up. They'll get up to about 22%. That's wonderful. Now, that's great. Come night, 
everyone's going to die because there's not going to be any more sun, of course. So we're going to have to go and add in a couple more things. I'm actually going to build these quite linearly out here. We're going to put in a power collector. It's basically just a giant battery so that our power will stay there during the night. And um, we can also put in some wind power. Wind power does operate during the night. The wind is variable here. You can see the wind speed over here. So day or night, you can't really count on the wind necessarily blowing. But as an average and with enough batteries, it should work out okay. I'm going to get the battery built first, and then we'll move on from there. So our people are moving inside. Airlock's relatively slow to cycle, but they'll move inside, especially to top off their oxygen supplies in here, uh, because their suits only last so long. We are going to build some more. I'm going to make sure that battery finishes first. What are we going to build next? Well, they're going to need somewhere to eat. A canteen is a very important part of our colony. Uh, the dorm as well. They'll need. They'll want to sleep. Biodome to grow some food. That's going to be a huge priority too. And there's tons of other buildings. I'll definitely start with the canteen now. Do I want to build in this direction? I think we'll be able to build through there. But I could put the canteen this way and actually build out to the left and maybe that would be better. You can use the mouse wheel to change the size you're building. I think the smallest canteen size is going to be fine for us for a good long time and it takes less material to build and early on we don't have that many materials. So we're going to get that connected. Okay we've got the battery pack. The battery pack is filling up. I'm going to go ahead and queue up uh, a wind turbine and yeah I'll put it over here. So one wind, one solar, one battery to start off with. I think will put us in relatively good shape. Uh, this uh, display here will show you how many colonists I have, how many bots I have working for me. Uh, this is our time counter. I think that's the bar here fills up as the day goes by. And then the active amount of wind. You can hit this or tap the Alt key to show your resources. We have 25 meals, 25 pieces of metal, 27 bioplastic. It also shows you what is currently being consumed with the... Um, the buildings we're putting down we have those 10 medical supplies and the 10 spare parts right now they're still being stored in the ship eventually i will want to go and recycle the ship because this will give me some more metal and bioplastic um any cubes of resource that's left outside will decay over time so you don't just want to leave them out there when you destroy the ship you'll really want some storage inside of your base i think so we'll see about getting in that canteen that way people can sit down and have a meal they'll also uh, we'll set up a water fountain as well so they can stay hydrated that's going to be important so it is night right now we don't have a ton of power we don't have a lot of power drain right now luckily uh, it's basically just the o2 generator and the water pump by itself so we're not going to die on this first night i think we'll use a little bit more power when the canteen is built but i think overall we're going to be just fine okay people are cycling in and out we're going to start seeing little status symbols above people's heads soon, showing that they're tired. Um, that was a meteorite right there. See, they... It says low chance of meteorite strikes, but man, oh man, if this is low, I would hate to see a high chance. Okay, the canteen will fill with oxygen, which is great. I'm going to let the uh, the wind finish. Um, actually, I think... Yeah, it's got all of its bits, so that's fine. Uh, we're out of O2 right now because of the lack of energy day is rising though the sun is rising we should start to generate some power real soon everyone's going out into their spacesuit so i don't think they'll die instantly there we go power is working again no complaints about that so you can hit tab to hide the um the covers you can also there we go show tops so you can do that i love the lighting effects like that is just lovely um, now, we can populate the canteen. We need to make sure to edit it. We're going to put in a small table, two people at a time to eat, should be more than sufficient. Uh, we are definitely going to need a water fountain. Um, we will need a meal maker. We don't need it instantly, but we're going to need it no matter what, so we're going to do that. That allows you to convert just like sort of raw veggies and things into an actual meal. And people will get bored, so we're going to give them a TV screen somewhere over here. There we go. We've got a fully... Um, decked out canteen. I'm going to let some of these construction jobs finish. And then the next thing will probably be the dorm and also um, somewhere where we can grow food. That's going to be pretty darn important. Okay. Well, at least we have some wind power now. Wind is blowing pretty well. Battery is actually charging, even though it is at night. Battery is charging. That's a really, really good sign. This setup won't last for that long in terms of, you know, power consumption, but at least it's working as is. And we haven't killed anyone yet. Thank goodness. Are you sitting down? Oh, you're eating a meal on the ground. I didn't realize you could actually eat your meals on the ground. So you don't need the canteen right away for your food, but it's still not a bad idea. See, here we go. We've got people are starting to get a little bit thirsty. Uh, luckily, we're constructing a water fountain right now, so people will be able to drink from that, which will, you know, use some of our water supply over here, which is fine. Water grid consumes one water and produces 
Excellent. We are, our water grid is all set. A lot of thirsty people, they're gonna go and take care of that. Uh, very soon they're gonna start to get tired. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a dorm. It's worth noting a dorm is a dead end. It can only have one connection, so you can't continue to build out from the dorm. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it in here. Again, I don't. we don't need a bigger dorm right now. The, uh, the smallest size is gonna be more than enough for us. And let's go ahead and get that link over there. Get the TV in there. Yeah, it's mostly water that people are looking for. One fountain's gonna be more than enough though. Right now, there's a bit of a backlog, but that's going to fix itself relatively soon. Meal maker is going to get produced next. We don't need the meal the meal maker yet, but I'm not going to cry too much about having it. Uh, meal maker has been built, lovely. Uh, so I'm going to get the dorm set up. Power situation still growing, excellent. I mean, the wind is blowing, so that's good. We're going to want to double up on batteries and solar panels and the wind turbine relatively soon, I think. Running out of power is a huge, huge problem. It's very bad when it happens, and it can sneak up on you very unexpected times. Tempted to put more now, but I don't think so. Okay, that's coming along nicely. So we need to make sure we can grow food and be self-sustaining. So we're going to build a biodome. Can I get it in here? Um, I'm, should I go to the next level? I think this one is actually worth building for the next level. Connect there. Can I also build a connection here? Yeah, there we go. People can walk, walk around the base a little bit easier. So it's going to take more resources. It's going to take five metal and five bioplastic to get this going. But we're going to want to grow a lot of plants. Um, arguably, maybe it's better to build one of the small ones than build another small one later on. But I think I'm going to be happy to have the one big one in the long run. Plants do a lot for us. They do provide food, but they also provide the starch that you use to build new bioplastic, which is needed for more construction. People are getting tired. There we go. The dorm is built. Although I can't edit it until the uh, the hallway is done here. Edit it is a funny word to say. So they can walk through these connections here. They won't be able to walk through these bits. So you can easily sort of force people to take long distance walks if you, uh, depending on how you construct things. So we're going to set up just one bunk bed. That is going to be more than enough for the size of our colony. There's going to be a backlog of people tired, but um, after they've all sort of had a cycle in bed, they're going to be fine. I don't know what planet we're on, but the day-night cycle is obviously a lot shorter than 24 hours because people don't need to sleep every night. So that's good. I'm very thankful about that. There you go, more bioplastic. How, how many do we have left? Okay, we still have enough to keep constructing for now, so that's really, really, really good news. And in particular... As soon as we can produce any goods whatsoever, say, you know, the vegetables and stuff over here, um, it means we can start to consider trade. I'm going to let this finish, and then I'll probably build a launch pad. Now, oftentimes we trade at sort of a crap rate, but at least it guarantees that we can get something uh, that we need in times of emergency, which is really nice. So still some tiredness, still waiting for that to be finished. We should have plenty of material for this and that. Just a question. Well, you're probably one there. What does this need? This just needs one bioplastic. So you're going to complete the dorm, and then you'll probably go right to bed. Oh, you're probably just a worker, not a constructor. Or the constructor bot had already taken... Yeah, you're a biologist. So you can carry things, but you won't actually be able to build them. There you go. A couple of people will go to bed right away. And that's groovy. Survival rank has reached. That is one of the milestones. So you can click on it and get a little a little sort of screenshot animation type thing. Uh, but again, it's kind of unskippable as far as I can tell and lasts like, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds, which is kind of annoying. So we're just going to skip those. If you want to see them, you'll just have to get your game, the game yourself. All right. Things are good. Power is filling up. I think we will need more power soon, especially once we get, you know, maybe the, the large biodome finished. So I think what I'm going to do... is get maybe one more wind turbine. Oh yeah, and you can make these bigger as well. You can make them huge. I don't know if that's what we want to do. Um, can you make, oh, you can make bigger power collectors too. Hey, what, let me go with size two power collector. This might be overkill right now, but I've been screwed by lack of power enough. And a size two wind turbine. You can build more connections, but it's not really necessary. It does give you some amount of redundancy, though, if things take damage. On the other hand, there's also more bits that have to be maintained and repaired. So I'll probably leave it be. Oxygen is filling up here, which is fine. Uh, O2 levels should be okay. They're dropping right now because this was completely empty, but once this fills up, we should be okay, I suspect. O2 mod levels are a little low here as well. 
but I think the generator is going to be fine. We can speed up the game. Yeah, there we go. The levels are rising. These will stop glowing red relatively soon. Okay. Yeah, this is just a big, big space to fill up with oxygen, so it took a while. And now we have a new little connection as well. But there we go, we're good. Ooh, connections of a size as well. Oh, medium. Small. Interesting. Yeah, I guess this is a really small little module, so that makes sense. Um, Alright, we've got the beds. People are going to keep cycling in and out of that. We're going to get some extra power up there. So the next thing to do, oh, is our biodome. We've got it. Great, let's put in some plants. So there's a variety of different plants you can grow. Um, the ones in red are mostly, they're going to give you a lot of, like, vegetables, to eat. It's almost exclusively all edibles. These ones that are in yellow tend to give you a fair amount of starch. They may give you some amount of food, some give you more starch, some give you more food. So you you want, I mean, plenty of food so that you can survive, but you want some starch that you can produce some bio um, bioplastic later on. Some of the plants grow very quickly, like the tomato, but they also need a lot of maintenance. Whereas the onions don't go quite as quickly, but they don't need quite as much attention. And early on, when we don't have much in the way of crew, I'm going to go with more of the low attention one. We'll get the one tomato, and we'll get the onion and the radish, which both seem to be um, low maintenance. Oh, the mushroom pad is especially low. So you know what? Let me cancel the radish. We'll have one tomato, one onion, and one mushroom pad. It'll grow slowly, but it needs less attention, and I'm totally okay with that. We'll build some starchy things soon. We don't need them quite yet, because we actually can't process the starch into anything quite yet, um, but soon enough, we will look into doing that. So we gotta remember, this is a dead end, so I can't construct anything else on it. Um, what I'm tempted to do is build my storage module and then disassemble this. Now, ideally, I think I'd like the storage near the airlock. No, we don't really have the space for it. I wonder if we got rid of the ship, if we might be able to fit something in here. I mean, there might just be no ability to have extra connections there. I mean, we do have tanks and stuff out here, which gets moved as we move the uh, the tunnels. But I'm willing to bet this just can't fit any more connections because of all the stuff. That's probably the reason that you can only ever have one connection on the dorm. It's just got a lot of things on the backside of it. Um, this has got some space. We could probably connect up over here. So, um, that's not super close to the airlock. But I guess it's fine. Of course, you know, I'm going to get material by recycling my colony ship. But, yeah, so you should recycle the colony ship. Um, but I'm also going to pay, spend material to, um, to build a storage spot. So maybe that doesn't make any sense right now. All right, so we got our plants. They're going to grow. Again, they'll need maintenance sometimes. And if we can see here, we can see that each one of these cycles, they'll just produce three vegetables. That's it. And then the vegetables can be used in the meal maker to make meals, which is good because we are consuming our meals, of course. Um, we are going to want to start some starch production soon. It's more building materials. This is good, but it also gives us something to trade. You know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a landing pad over here. Right near the airlock. Because we're going to get goods delivered from the landing pad. And we're going to want a power connection there. So that way people can carry things from the landing pad to here. That's going to be what we want to do. And we need to make sure we don't fail to do that. Landing pad will bring more colonists and will bring trade ships to us. Big power station here. I think it used twice as much material to build, didn't it? And it's only got a 25% higher capacity? Is that true? Went from one to two. Yeah! Yeah! We'd be better off building more of the small ones. That's good to know. And what about the power generation over here? Um, again, we doubled the cost, and we're only getting 50% uh, more production. The wind turbine does, the small one does 20, the big one does 30. That's interesting. See, I'd never built the big ones yet. So, I mean, I'm sure they use less space, and they become more important as you build a larger and larger colony, but these are really not useful right now. Um, these bigger domes do make sense because they sort of future-proof you. They've got a lot more room for more stuff in them, in particular for the growing. Um, these guys are tired. We only have the one set of bunks. I think I'm still just going to stay with one set of bunks for now, though. Okay, we've got a little bit more materials. What are we going to do? Well, it's probably not a bad idea to have a processing plant... Maybe even... Oh, yeah, there's an extra connection here, which this is a good spot for it. And we're going to have to recycle things soon. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get one starchy plant started. Um, I know. Ah, slow production and low maintenance. There we go. I still want low maintenance stuff while we um, don't have that many people around. You can see here the plant, the uh, tomato plants are asking for maintenance right now. They need some help. 
So what we will do is we will let this go and then we can process our starch into bioplastic. And even if we don't use the bioplastic right away, we can at least, at least sell it for more. We are completely out of metal and bioplastic, so it is definitely time to recycle this because that will, there you go, give us a bunch of metal and bioplastic, which is good because I wouldn't gonna be able to build anything else without that. But again, stuff that's just lying around out here will slowly decay. Probably we'll use this up before anything happens and we might be able to storage spot before that becomes a problem as well But for now it is definitely slowly decaying You can build more air airlocks too, which I think will become important later on All right, so you're gonna bring that over which is good. Yeah, see more things need some maintenance over here uh, one of the things I got is a hint about um, Landing pad permissions. So one of the buttons we haven't looked at yet here is base management. We can see all sorts of awesome stats Welfare, poor, yeah, that sounds about right, no prestige. Here's our stats about our breakdown between total colonists and then how many of them are workers, biologists, visitors. Oh, colonists versus visitors. And of our colonists, we've got three workers, two biologists, one engineer, one medic. And then we've got a total of two bots, of which one is a carrier bot, one is a constructor bot. We have no driller bots, which I believe probably work our mine later on. I've never bought one yet. Uh, workers can also work mines. And then our resources. And there's like sexy, sexy graphs of how much stuff we've got. See your number of meals is going down, for example. We can get our grid information. Power. So this is, um, oh, power grid consumes 23 and produces 18, so it's overloaded. We do have a storage here. Here's our water situation. We have no water storage right now. We could, we can build that right now. We're going to be fine there. And then our total oxygen. There's 10 people in the base. Generators are producing oxygen for approximately 20. Excellent. Landing permissions. We want to allow colonists. Yes. We want to allow traders. Yes. Uh, visitors would be good, but we don't actually have a starport. We only have a basic landing pad, so we can't do that. And we can ask... Um, what kind of people that we want. Like maybe we want more biologists for more growing, for example. I'm just gonna leave it at the default for now. It seems completely reasonable. Um, and so I think this is, yeah, we are. this is what we are aiming for. So this is not every ship will bring this breakdown. It will look at what we're missing and then try to fill it in. I certainly want one medic and at least one engineer all the time. Engineers fix things, medics fix people. Biologists grow food and workers just fill in a lot of the other gaps. And speaking of uh, growing food, where's our biologists? We've got two, worker, medic, worker. Oh, they might be sleeping. Worker, biologist, yeah, okay. Listen, my plants aren't gonna grow on their own, buddy. I'm tempted. 30% biologist. We've got two, they're probably, just so happens they're probably both sleeping at the same time. It's not the end of the world. You're complaining about lack of fun. Didn't I give you a TV? Um, I thought I did. Did the TV get replaced when I built that tunnel? I suppose it's possible. Okay, let's rebuild that then. We're not going to have another tunnel that goes right there. There's really no room for it. If we can connect something else, we're going to connect over this way. Uh, that is fine. More meteors falling in the background. That's wonderful and scary things are going to be brought in. You can see they don't decay too quickly. I mean, certain things might decay at different rates, but they're all fine right now. So we don't have to worry about storage too, too much. Um, power is... How come it's not draining? Oh, it's draining out of here first. Yeah, okay, that's fair. And quite quickly at that, because there's no wind and it is night as well. So no sunlight. Very bad news. That's wind grow. Oh, right. We finished the processing plant over here. So we need to add... Um, right now, all I want is a bioplastic processor. The other thing you can build in this are the metal processors, but we don't currently have any ore. Oh, we got our first ship! Video screen has been built, good, so some people will have fun watching that. So what is this? It's a colonist ship, so we got some extra colonists. We got another engineer and another worker. Mm, that's fine. Could use another biologist, but I can't complain too, too much about our situation right now. We don't have that many people now. Anyway... Oh, 20% engineer. Yeah, that's... Oh my god, another... That... That is coming really close with these, uh, these meteors. Holy cow. Expansion level reach, which is good. Look at this. We're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to pull a, a Martian and leave everyone... One person behind while everyone just escapes on one of these ships that comes by. Um, uh, looking forward to a trade ship. I think we could potentially sell them some stuff. I don't know. Um, I think engineers work these. I'm actually not sure who works these processors. Oh, workers. Okay, so we do want a lot of workers. Um, we can also build, now that we have this, we can build a factory, 
where we create extra goods. Like, that's where we create more spares. But I don't think that's the right order. Oh, you know what we don't have yet is a sick bay. Because people will get injured from time to time. Can I fit it back here? Looks like no. And that's a dead end, so that's a big no. Um... And yen. Oh, 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 oh. There was a spot. There. I don't want to use up another connection there. But this one will be fine. All right, so we'll have a sick bay. People will occasionally get injured. And they will have to be treated by our medic at that point. There we go. Our botanists are finally getting some stuff done. If we look at the maze over here, uh, it still primarily makes food. And then one level of starch. I think I can get info on th some of these. Um, vegetable pads? Yeah, I guess uh, I'm not getting the information on what all the growables are. Because I would like more starch, right? I like that the maze was low maintenance. And we don't want any of the high maintenance ones. I won't, I won't stress about it for now. People are going to be busy enough. Oh, one of the other things you can build that's very nice is the medicinal pad. So these are all like pads of like, they're the hydroponics or aeroponics. Uh, this will grow uh, medicinal plants that you can process into medicine. Um, there's also trees. Produces oxygen during the day, consumes some oxygen at night. Colonists can relax by looking at it for a bit. And then you've got genetically modified tomatoes and onions, but you need the DNA for them. Um, so we're going to leave it be for now, but that's okay. What is this? A trade ship. What do you got? Ooh, beer. Uh, we can live without that. Meals should be okay. I think we're going to start producing our own food pretty reliably. Oh, speaking of, we can get our genetically modified onion DNA over here. It's 400 space bucks, which would be quite a bit. I don't think I can... Um... Well, I suppose I could use some of the bioplastic, because in the theory I could start making it soon. I don't really need to buy meals, though. I think we should be okay for that. Tell you what, let me... Just sell a little bit for some money, and you got a 55% commission. Uh, I should probably wait for someone who has a lower commission if I'm going to do that sort of thing. So let's not trade for now. We're going to build. We need some maintenance over here. That's some spare part demand. Botanist working on the tomato plant. Is that you? You're a botanist? Yes. I.J. Rubio. Well, I. Quill 18. Okay. Um, I would like to set up mining. And then something to process the mining now mining is an outdoor bit so really it needs to be near the airlock but I'm not sure how to do that without cutting things off unless I just build another airlock doesn't take a lot of material it uses some can I put an airlock over here can I fit that ah, right there interesting or I could just build more you know what I'm gonna do I'm going to build a storage facility in here, sort of expand in this direction. We'll build it close, that's going to be okay. It's going to use some more resources, of course. Build that way. Then, I'm going to put an airlock there. That way I can still sort of build around, I think. And then a mine... Really? Oh, probably because it didn't have a connection. Because you still have to build with a connection. Now, will it have a connection if I build it here later on? Because I don't want to build the airlock somewhere that doesn't work out. Not that I really have the material support anyway. I'm definitely going to have to trade for some stuff here. We do have some production, which is good. We should have lots of power. And we are producing a handful of goods. We're probably going to end up with an overkill of vegetables and meals. Um, which is okay. Vegetables don't sell for that much, but they sell for some. I just don't want to cut myself off from things. Alright, this should be fine. I don't know if I can rotate these structures. I can rotate my view. Because, like... Maybe it'll auto-rotate when the door goes a certain way. All right, let me put it a little bit more over here. It'll give us a bit more space to potentially pace, place a mine over here. Um, and we can still go around this way, I hope, with other structures. 
I mean, I can always recycle things. Oh, there we go. This mine can go here and will be powered from the airlock. That's exactly what I'm looking for, because mine is an outside building. So having it near the airlock makes sense. And in particular, having it near the storage depot probably makes a lot of sense, too. Did I build that medium? And is that what I wanted? Nope, that's not the building. Okay, there is no small size. This is as small as it gets. Okay, and you can build it super huge. Uh, this will fill up relatively quickly, but I don't want to use too many resources to build a storage spot. Got another colonist ship. How many are we up to? We're up to 10 people now. Okay, and what's our distribution here? Okay, we still don't have another medic. That's fine. We're okay with one medic. Uh, I think we did get another biologist, which is nice. Yeah, we're actually exactly at our perfect uh, distribution percentages. What does this one do? Oh, yeah, text. Look, there's like tons of different patents and stuff that we can unlock. And then build later on. So the oxygen will spread. I mean, the bigger your base, you know, it I doesn't use more oxygen unless there's a leak, I suppose. It's just the number of people that use it. So that's going to equalize relatively soon. So we'll have our storage bay working. That'll all go. Hopefully we've got enough material to actually get that done. We may not. So we may have to trade for some metal and bioplastic. Well, again, we should produce bioplastic on our own once we start getting starch. We have no starch yet. And the starch would come relatively slow from this maze pad. Yeah, I'm wondering. So this mushroom just finished. Um, I'm going to recycle the mushrooms. Now, is that how much it costs, one bioplastic, or did it, like, lose any? No, yeah, okay, so we got it all back, which is great. So I'm going to go and build a, um, in the tutorial, they get you to write, build a rice pad, so I guess I will do that. I don't know if rice is more starchy than uh, corn. I would think not, maybe, but I don't know. What do I know? It's a long walk to get around here and build this stuff. But later on, they'll be able to potentially walk indoors. I mean, that means more airlock stuff, but I don't know. And they're having to walk around the base, but I mean, I can't really avoid it. And I'm actually just happy that they can walk this way. And they're not forced to always go over here. So I think we're okay. Hint, resources. Yes, raw resources, yada, yada, yada. And you can see here, they're losing a little bit of their quality. Not much, though. we got plenty of time before we need to worry about that for reals. And now that we got a storage bay, people should bring things in here. In fact, that's exactly what's happening. He looks like a pizza delivery man. Ah. The vet, I like that the um, the food and some of the things, like medical supplies, are like... They're, the cubes are shorter. I don't know if they use up less space in storage. There's an actual just storage thing here, and what'll happen? We'll just get a big giant pile, which is pretty fun. We are using more power. Every room uses some amount of power. Um, I wonder if this number here is based on the amount of stuff that's inside it. Yeah, probably, because this one here is using four, so it's because it's got more things, I suspect. Um, it is night. Our batteries are full. Our wind turbines are blowing, so that's a big part of it. And then we've got the solar during the day. Um, at some point soon, we'll probably... We may want to build another solar panel to help ensure these things stay completely charged throughout the day. Um, because if we get a day without any wind at this point, the solar may not be able to uh, keep pace. Did I build a medium one right away? Oops, that's not the one I want. No, again, that's the only, that's the smallest size then. We can build huge, massive monster ones, but apparently that's not as efficient to do. So we'll keep building some small ones. This spot is waiting to be repaired. It needs a spare part and an engineer to go and give it some love. Same thing is happening here. This carrier bot is about to crap out we do have some spare parts though yeah we've got 10 but the bots need regular spare parts and um if ever these components take damage they will need some spare parts i believe to fix as well i don't know if they have natural wear and tear or if it's just the spare part damage i think they actually do have wear and tear uh they're all excellent condition oh you know what i'm probably thinking of is when we get a sandstorm everything starts to take a bunch of damage that's exactly what i'm considering so then you go through your spare parts very quickly, and hopefully we have a spare part building industry before that happens. Um, what are we missing for these things? You're actually good. You just need construction. You're good. You just need construction. And you're good. So we have all our bits. We just need someone to go over there and work it. And I think right now, most of our people are busy hauling stuff inside, which is not too bad. Let's go ahead and uh, bring up to speed four here. I mean, this has got to happen too. Not necessarily what we're looking for right now, but, you know, what can you do? That bot still needs some, some loving. Mine has been built. Okay, but it's not powered yet until the airlock gets finished. There we go. And then this connection needs to be finished as well. But it had all the parts, so there we go. Lovely. So now our, I believe our workers will go and operate the mine. That does use a lot of power. Holy cow. That is a ton of power. What's our um, grid status here? Especially at night. 
And that's with the wind well, hardly blowing, so we might still be good. But we have added a lot of extra load here. I will probably build another solar panel again to make sure that these things are completely charged up during the day. Uh, right now, yeah, see this, with no wind blowing, this one solar panel is not enough. We are still losing power. That's calling a ship. All right, so we get more people. So, uh, not you. We need another solar panel. In fact, I'm tempted to build a couple. But we'll start with just this. You can build um, redundant power lines, too, because it protects you against um, an asteroid or a meteor smashing one of them. Then you can still have your connection to the rest of the base, for example. In particular, I'll probably want one down here, because there's one little thing that could be destroyed. And honestly, like, building all these chains up might be a good idea for maximum redundancy in the power grid. I don't know. As long as everything else in my base is going fine, we're not going to have to worry about it because people will be able to repair things quickly enough. But what are the odds that things keep working properly? Oh, I just noticed this video is getting quite long. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put a pause in here. I'm going to put a cut. And when we come back, wait, asteroids still hit when the game is paused? Maybe background asteroids. Maybe those are not the real strikes. I don't know. Um, when we come back, we're going to continue working on our space base and hope that no one dies from asphyxiation or starvation, which tends to be how it happens. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.